All right, we're back and we're going to end up making the front side of the box right now. So we're going to start with a new sketch. And I want to make this new sketch right on this surface here, right there, because that's where the front piece is going to be going up there. All right, so we're in a new sketch right now. I'm going to look at it from the front view. And we are going to steal a whole bunch of the parts that we already have. So we want these fingers to like lock together real tight. So instead of drawing all the tabs again, we can just steal them from the last part I made already here. So if you push use there, and then we go to this front, and I'm just going to click on all these little rectangles here. And now it's stealing all those shapes and puts them into this sketch here. It's projecting them. It's kind of the real term here. So I'm done sketching with that, or using, uh, and I'm going to hide that for a second so you can see what this looks like. And that's looking pretty good, right? So let's now draw a rectangle that's going to be the whole front here. And notice it's going to line up there and it snaps to that position there. And we're going to, ooh, what did I just do? That did not, oh, there, okay, we're back. All right, now we're going to dimension this to be the height. So that's the height variable that we already have over here. Now we have the fun job of making just the side tabs um, because the bottom ones are always gonna, already going to be there. So side tabs. Let's decide how many we want. You know, I'm deciding I think I want maybe four, maybe five. It's really up to you. Um, but I'm going to make one little a rectangular shape in this corner and I'm going to say the length of this edge should be the same as the ones we've been doing in the past which is the thickness um, by clicking that equal I made those to be equal now I'm dimensioning this one and this is the height and let's see I want to do four this time right so I got the height divided by four and then I'm going to do another one here just putting it just kind of a random little rectangular shape there to start with. Now I can force these to be the same size again. And this and this, I want to force those to be equal. And then I also want the distance between these to be the height divided by four. And then I got my tabs there. This one's going to look a little different on the bottom here, but it'll be fine in the end when we, when we start extruding this. All right. Now I want to reflect these from left to right here. So I'm going to put my center line. Notice that's centered because it's showing up with that little rectangle there in the middle when I hover over it. And I turn that into a construction line also. And I'm also going to put my horizontal construction line in here so that I can reflect things from top to bottom as well. And again, I want that one to be a construction line as well. Oop, there we go. All right, so let's start mirroring. So now it says select a mirror line. I'm going to reflect from left to right here. So this is going to be this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. And sometimes it's hard to grab this piece behind it. You have to drag a box around it. Notice that's a blue box, not a yellow orange color box. That's going to give me that little guy there. All right, done reflecting. Now let's do another reflection. And sometimes it gets a little confusing on which ones we, which of these rectangles on the bottom you want to reflect to the top. So if you unhide that part, you can see I want this part here. So I'm going to want that piece and that piece. I'm also going to want these pieces here. I can drag that one again. This one, and this one, and this one. Now we're looking pretty good. If I change the view, let's hide that again just so we don't get confused. All right. We have a few extra lines down there, but that doesn't really matter for the purpose of doing this. And we're, we're pretty much done and ready to extrude now. So let's push extrude. And it's thinking extrude everything, which is not what I want. So I'm going to delete that up there. Now, let's go find the pieces I do want to extrude. Sometimes, again, it's helpful to show this 
Um, again, so I can see that I want this piece and this piece. Oh, and look at that, it's turning red and weird things are happening. It's trying to add things together. I want a new body, a new part, and that's gonna be the thickness also. So let's go back here and, you know, I got those two pieces, I want this piece. And look at that, it's looking pretty good. Something weird's going on up here in this corner though. I, hmm. Interesting. If you, we have a little weird pattern going on here. Um, that is because of the size of the tabs and how many tabs I put in. Um, if you want to play around with that and change it, you can change the number of tabs you have on the side. But for what we're doing, uh, that should be all right. And we'll push OK. And now we officially have one side done there, and that's looking pretty good. Let's make a copy of that and put it to the other side. So how are we going to do that? Let's come up here. And where'd it go? There it is. Linear pattern is what we want to do. And we want to pattern the entities to pattern. We want to make a copy of this one. The direction should be going this way. So we're going to click on a line that's also going in that direction. And then it's patterning it right now, but it's going the wrong direction. So we're going to flip that. And the distance should be the width. But you'll see it's off by just the thickness of the material. So we want to say the width minus the thickness. And that should plop that in just the right spot there. And we're good to go. So our design is now ready to move on to the next step. And we will start deciding the sides in the next video. Enjoy. See you soon.